y'all hey welcome back to the fire and water cooking channel this is darren i'm gonna start a uh, actually a cook here for you my first cook i'm gonna do some chicken thighs and i'm gonna make a alabama style white sauce to go with them but first let's gonna get to get the chicken chicken thighs in the sous vide um i actually got my water uh, in my container already and we're gonna show you that and then we're gonna get started so give me a minute we'll walk you through okay, it okay guys this here is the water container I've got it about uh, two-thirds of the way full and usually when I especially when I'm cooking hotter I will actually use hot tap water it's about as hot as I can get it so we're gonna be cooking these chicken thighs at about 155 for about four hours before we throw them on the grill and get them all uh, nice and brown so I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in I got the water in I'm gonna get my circulator going and then we're gonna throw them in the bath. Okay, guys, I got my uh, sous vide unit set. Set it for 155 degrees for four hours. And right now it's the water starting at 142 degrees, so it's gonna take a little bit for it to get up to 155. As soon as it hits 155, I'll go ahead and throw the chicken uh, thighs in there. And then I'll set my cover on top. We'll let them go there for about four hours. And I'm doing 155 today because I want to make sure that I get most of the red that's around the bone cooked. Not that I, you know, know that it's it's still safe to eat at a lower temperature because it's pasteurized, but just for aesthetic sake, you know, my family doesn't like to see red around the bone. They think it's raw. So <laughs> understand that they will be done at a lower temperature, but sometimes for aesthetic sake, you know, you eat with your eyes a lot of times and some people get freaked out by, uh, you know, red, red meat, or and especially on the chicken. So, so we're getting ready to get this water up to temp. As soon as it gets up to temp, I'll throw the chicken thighs in, show you how the setup is, and then we'll be back. Okay, all I'm back. I'm just uh, showing you here that we are up to temp now to 155. Water's uh, pretty warm, steam coming off of it. And that steam is one of the reasons why you need a, some kind of cover for it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is throw the chicken thighs in the water. Got a big pack of them here. They're throwing them in frozen. I did pre-season them before I vacuum packed them and put them in the freezer. And I just usually put a little bit of uh, my chicken rub on there, which is pretty easy. It's salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, a little Italian seasoning, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in the water. They're gonna float a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is put my rack I normally put in on them. And that's gonna drop the water temperature back down some. But that's all right, we know that's gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do is throw my cover on top, reduce the uh, evaporation some, and I'm gonna let these go for about four hours. So you can sit here in the water for four hours, and uh, when we're done with that, we will throw them on the grill, get them grilled up. Hey guys, we got the uh, chicken still cooking over there in the sous vide container timer just started going off so got about four hours till that's done so what i'm going to do is whip up the uh, alabama barbecue sauce the white barbecue sauce i was talking about um i'm using the recipe off of amazing ribs but the only ingredient i don't have and i'm not going to put in there because we're not a big fan of it in this anyway is the horseradish but uh, all the ingredients i got lined up here I'm gonna walk you through as I dump them in. In the bowl, I already have the Duke's mayonnaise. From what I understand, you do have to use Duke's mayonnaise or it's not authentic Alabama white sauce. So I have the uh, three quarters of a cup of the mayonnaise in there. And I didn't have any, actually ran out of uh, mustard powder. So it calls for a tablespoon of mustard powder. I just use some regular yellow mustard. Hoping that'll work. But um, for the wet ingredients, besides the mustard, you got a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar, quarter of a cup of lemon juice, quarter of a cup of apple juice. Then I got all my dry ingredients in one container. Calls for one tablespoon of powdered garlic, one tablespoon coarsely ground black pepper, one tablespoon of, uh, or actually a quarter tablespoon of kosher salt, 
then a half a taste tablespoon of cayenne pepper. Like I said, I'm leaving out the horseradish, so that's about the only ingredient that's not going to be in it that's in this recipe. So I'll actually mention that on the uh, in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. Like I said, that's all that's in this. Go ahead and throw everything in to the bowl so that we can get it all mixed up and see how it, how it looks. I did add one thing that this didn't have in it, that the recipe did not have in it. It was actually, uh, I put in a quarter teaspoon of onion powder. So we'll see how that plays out. So I got all my wet and dry ingredients mixed up. I'm just gonna go ahead and whisk this up, see how it turns out, and let it set in the refrigerator until we uh, get our chicken ready. Got it all whisked up. And one thing I do know is that this uh, sauce is supposed to be very, uh, very watery. I'm not really a, a very watery sauce type of guy. Um, so I might put a little bit more mayonnaise in it. This uh, sauce actually reminds me of a sauce that we use up in upstate New York where I grew up. It was called Cornell chicken, which is very similar. It uses apple cider vinegar and uh, a mayonnaise type uh, uh, base. It's actually, they just use a whole egg and then poultry seasoning and a couple other ingredients. So it's very similar to that. That's been around for a long time, Cornell chicken. Look it up on the internet. I'll put a link to the in the comments below so you can kind of look and see how similar it is to this one. Um, it's uh, you know, this is a little bit different. And it kind of threw their own uh, threw their own southern twist on it, I guess. But um, I'm gonna add a little bit more man to this and thicken it up some. Like I said, I don't like really light uh, watery sauce, so I want to really stick to the chicken pretty good. So probably not gonna have a whole lot more. Just maybe another half a cup or so. See how that goes, and then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it cool down while the chicken's cooking. Hey y'all, I'm back. Um, getting ready to start the fire. The chicken thighs have been in there for about three hours now. So I'm gonna get the fire going. Gonna probably take about 15, 20 minutes for the fire to hit around 350, kind of stay there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of these fire starters. These, uh, they're sawdust and wax fire starters. You can get them on Amazon. Home Depot, they're uh, pretty uh, easy to use. I usually cut mine in half and just use like a half of one in each spot. I'm gonna light the grill in three different spots here just to make sure it's an even fire. But these uh, fire starters are, they don't leave any chemical taste or anything. Uh, like I said, it's made out of sawdust and wax. You can find them pretty much anywhere. I usually buy them in bulk on Amazon for like $20 for 144 of them, and then I cut them in half. They work really well. Um, they get the fire up and going within 15 minutes. Just as uh, some people like to use a torch, some people like to use an electric starter, but I like these. Um, that's usually how I light it when I'm going to do a hotter cook. Light it in three spots, get going. Um, we're going to let that let those fire starters burn out until the fire gets going on the coals, then we'll come back. Throw some smoking wood, put the heat deflectors in, because we're gonna be cooking indirect for these chicken thighs. And we're gonna let the, uh, put, throw some smoking wood on it and let it get, get up to temp. And we'll be back. All right, I'm back. Uh, fire's starting to go pretty good. The fire starters have burned out, starting to cook long. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some cherry wood on here. Um, get the cherry smoke on. I really like cherry with the uh, with chicken. It really gives it a good uh, gives it a good color and it gives it a good flavor. It's a very light smoke flavor and it's a nice dark color to it. Got my fan going on here, blowing the smoke out over the pool, out from under the overhang. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some cherry chunks. And gonna... All right, I got my cherry chunks. And one of the good things about these Kamado grills, uh, they're so efficient. You don't need a whole lot of wood to get good smoke flavor on your food. So I'm only actually gonna put one or two chunks in here. And I'm gonna put them right by where the fire is going so that they can get started pretty good. So in those three chunks, that's gonna be more than enough smoke to get on the chicken. Um, I'm gonna give it another 10 or 15 minutes, get the grill up to temp. I'm gonna shoot for like 350 smoke will get rolling 
the white smoke will be gone. We'll have some nice blue smoke. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my heat deflectors on. And like I said, this will let us do indirect cooking so we're not cooking directly over the fire. Just makes it so, you know, we're using, uh, just like you in your oven, you're not cooking right up against the fire. But we're going to get it hot enough where it's going to crisp up the skin. So let me get this all set up, and we'll see you back when I get right. the chicken on. I got the thighs out of the sous vide. Um, normally what you do when you uh, sous vide a steak or a roast or something you want to get a good sear on, you pat them dry pretty good. I'm not going to do that with the chicken because we're going to throw this in the smoker. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more of my chicken rub on them. Just uh, so that they have a good coating of it. Some of it's come off in the liquid in the bag. But I'm just going to put it on the skin. I know the flavor's already in the, the other part of the meat already. So I'm just going to add me another coat of the seasoning on there. I'm going to run these out to the grill. Not, like I said, I'm not going to pat them dry. Some of the seasoning I just put on is going to dry up some of that water. And they're going to sit in the smoker for a good uh, 35, 40 minutes. Get some smoke to them. Get some heat to them. So I'll run them out there. Outside. Tell you about that fan. See how the smoke's getting blown out from under the overhang from the fan. It's a good amount of smoke coming out. Grills right up to 350. We're gonna put these bad boys on and we're gonna let them sit on the grill for about 35, 40 minutes. Then we're gonna come check on them. All we're really doing, we're not cooking them. Remember, we're just gonna get them some smoke to them, crisp up the skin. They will cook a little bit more than they were in the bag. But I'm not really concerned about it. We're not going to cook them to death. We're just going to get them where that skin is nice and crispy and we got some smoke to it. Yeah, that cherry smoke is really nice. It's going to be really good on these. And that's it. We've got them on there. We'll put this back on. Close it back down a little bit. Let it sit there. It'll come right back up to 350 within a couple minutes. And then we'll come check on them in about, about 20 minutes. Yeah, right, guys, it's been about 15 minutes. They're starting to get a little crispy. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna put some of that Alabama white sauce on there. Just kind of paint it on a little bit just so we can season it up some. It's gonna drip it on. Not a whole lot. And then we're gonna put a little bit more on when it's done. We're just going to put it on there to get a little flavor to them. Then we'll close the lid back up. And let some more of that wood smoke get in there. Like I said, just not going to put a lot on. Just going to cover the skin. Get that flavor on there. One. That's it. We're going to close it back up and we'll come back in another 10 minutes. Alright guys, it's been another 10 minutes or so. They're looking kind of golden now. Look at that. Look at that color on them. I know it's kind of hard to see with the smoke, but they're looking pretty good. Well, I might just let them go another couple minutes here. And we'll take them off, take them inside, and we can get a better look at them. They're almost done. All right, there they are, all off the grill. A nice sheen to them. And all I'm going to do now is going to take that more of that Alabama barbecue sauce. Just going to coat it on there. I guess normally what they do in Alabama is they dip the whole chicken in there. It comes out a dripping mess. But I'm just going to coat these with some more of the sauce. Let them rest here for a minute while I get the rest of my sides and call everybody in here for dinner. But don't those look good? I'm not going to be like most YouTube guys and take a bite of it and go, mm -mm. I'm just going to let it sit here so you can look at it. When I finish, coat it with the sauce. There you have it, guys. I'm sure it's going to be pretty good. Um, 
I'll put all the recipes and the, for the sauce and everything uh, down in the description. And thanks for joining me. Come back again. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Follow us on our Facebook page and our Facebook group. I'll see you next time. Well, there's the finished plate, guys. Oh, somebody's already eaten. Oh, wow. Check it out. You can really dig in. So follow us on Facebook. Follow us on our Facebook page and group.